أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإياكم ومحدثات الأمور فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد Beloved brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, all praise due to Allah, the of forgiving, the most merciful, the one who has promised our sins to be forgiven and all our shortcomings to be overlooked. But conditions apply with your shahada, with your submission, and with your tawbah. Everything can become past. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us Muslims. And if anybody here is not, we pray that they become today a Muslim or a Muslimah. My beloved ones, this is the first key to the Jannah. This is the actual key to the Jannah. All rest, you may say, just are complementaries. And I pray that we all are rewarded for our effort for the night. All those brothers, first of all, starting from thanking Allah, which I did and do again. Alhamdulillah. And also, man lam yashkurinna, salam yashkurinna. Those who are not thankful to Allah, uh, two people are not thankful to Allah. So I thank, first of all, all the brothers, the organizers. I would not take even one single name, fear of missing some, and the shaitan coming in between us. The organizers, as I said, those who have invited me, those who have welcomed me, and this project, and those brothers who handle this project. So that we are here today to continue with this good effort and work. I have been associated with them ever since, even before they were able to buy this property. So our history goes back more than 10 years, alhamdulillah. And in due time, I have seen them prosper, develop, go forward. But everything does come at a price. <coughs> the topic which I have chosen, or with advice, is the best of the both worlds. If we want to talk about that, which I will, though it may be very little, the most appropriate with which I should start is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi l'akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. There is nothing better than this to be said to achieve and attain for yourself the best of this world and hereafter. Oh Allah, Rabbana, our Lord, right? Give us, this is a verse in the Quran, atina fi dunya hasana. Give us from this world what is good for me. And also in hereafter, what is good for me? Waqina adab al-nar. And save us from the punishment of the fire. Now, the word hasana, which is good. Hasan means good. So one day you start asking Allah, you, you make hundred times, say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi l'akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar and you are looking to buy a new car. 
after the after the end of your episode and that hardcore dua for weeks you ended up with a 20 year old car see what went wrong jazakallah khair what went wrong they, is it that my dua was wrong is it that I don't deserve it. I pray five times a day. Right? You keep on asking this. But you forget that you said, Oh Allah, fi dunya hasana. Good. The good of this dunya is not what is always absolute good. Which is only in hereafter. Because if you were granted the new car, you may have become arrogant, proud. So Allah wanted to protect you from that pride. So Allah gave you something which made you humble. Oh Allah, I want to be healthy. Al-afu al-afiyah. You keep on making that dua and yet in the entire congregation of your masjid you are the most sickly person. Though you pray five times and you are always in the masjid. You never commit the sin and yet you are very sickly. You don't know the wisdom behind it, isn't it? You don't know, but Allah knows. One day a woman, she's a woman, wasn't when the case started on her. She had severe spell on her. Even in spite of her father being the imam and reciting on her wasn't enough. To cut the story short, famous Raqi, a Raqi is a person who does Ruqya. Ruqya is a process of reciting verses and a hadith on a person possibly in need of it due to evil eye or in possession of the Satan which can happen for various reasons. So that person is called Raqi. It can be for evil eye or for exorcism. That is Ikhraj al-Jinn. The <coughs> so this Raqi, he started to recite. He did a bit on her. And then she was a bit okay. And he, they, he told them to follow it up. They did not do it exactly. She came back again very sick. The sheikh started to recite on her and ordered her to recite entire Surah Al-Baqarah. Entire Surah Al-Baqarah. Every day. You know, أَخْذُهَا بَرَكَ تَرَكُوهَا حَسَرَ وَلَا يُقَاوِمُهَا الْبَطَلَ To take Surah Al-Baqarah is baraka, blessings. To not be part of that, you are a loser. And the Satans are not able to stand in front of Surah Al-Baqarah. And Tajrubatan, not Tajruba is an experiment. Tajruba means people who did it in time of need. They can give you answers to this. So this woman, Hafidahullah wa Shafahullah, Amin. She started to recite Surah Al-Baqarah every day. Not only that. She was reciting it and, re, uh, and praying also with Surah Al-Baqarah, Qiyamul Layl. The Shaykh started to recite in, in, in the end part of Ramadan, in one of those nights of Laylatul Qadr possibly. That is when she started to vomit and things coming out from her body inside. Things like stones, things like papers, in which were for no kind of um, pictures, things written, and other materials. And then she came back again next day and started to do the vomiting again continuously till Allah gave her shifa. But the shahid, Allah keyword her, after a while, she calls back the sheikh and she is saying, Ya sheikh, is it okay for me to
you make dua that Allah makes me sick again, whoop, why is that ya binti? She said, Ya Sheikh, you know the amount of Qiyamul Layl tahajjud I used to pray? You know, Sheikh, the amount I used to recite Surah Al Baqarah? You know, Sheikh, all this is gone. I don't do it anymore. So she is cured, but she is losing so much in rewards, which made her think twice. So you don't know why you are not the most handsome, why you are not the most rich, richest one, why are you not the most healthiest, why are you not the most smartest, why is it that you are not Al-Hafidh Al-Allama? Why you are not the best scholar? Why you are, you are not the best spoken person? Every one of these things comes with the strings attached, Billah. There are strings attached to it. If you become too famous, if you become too rich, if you become too beautiful, strings attached, people, they get this pride. It's so difficult to be protected from it. You don't know, but Allah knows. And that's why, my beloved ones, this dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adab al-nar. Then you know whatever. You, it doesn't mean you don't ask Allah for what is what you want. You ask, but you know if it is good for you, Allah will give it to you. Now, because the best of the two worlds, what are those two worlds? One is this dunya. And the other is Akhirah. This world and hereafter is like Quran and Sunnah. How? Each one complements the other. Quran, good part of it cannot be understood without the Hadith. Right? Like that. Your hereafter is nothing unless you act now. Nothing in a sense, it's only hellfire then. But to get to the Jannah, it starts here. And nowhere else, you won't be given another opportunity. So this is where the best of the two, both worlds, that's one point. Another one, when Allah created us, Allah gave us this dunya and gave us everything in this dunya. It is a way of testing you, a way of your survival, the means of your survival, and at the same time, it is a way for you to get to Jannah. Dunya is very attractive. Very, very attractive. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna dunya hulwatun khadira. This dunya is hulwa, hulwa means sweet. Anything sweet is extremely attractive. And khadira, green, lavish. And then what? وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مُسْتَخْرِفَكُمْ فِيهَا لِيَنْذُرَ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ Allah has made you a vice current in this dunya. Meaning that you have been created in this dunya. Why? Allah wants to test you how you work. Wallahi, Allah could have made the Jannah and put you all here. All of us in the Jannah no Disney, nothing, no Melbourne, no Sydney, Kalas. Sorry, I cannot name Melbourne and forget Sydney, or I can't name Sydney and forget about Melbourne, as you know. So I have to mention both of them together, just in case some brothers from Sydney are here. Nothing like that. Nothing, right? But Allah made us in this dunya to test you. Fattakud dunya wa nisa. The entire dunya, be careful of it. You have to know your limits. And only one thing has been singled out from this entire dunya. Anybody can say it, brave enough to say it? Say it. Woman, Jazakallah khairan, yes. Don't worry, brother. Rasulullah said it, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You are safe. Why? Sisters may take it wrongly. Feminists totally misunderstand it. They don't know anything about Islam. They don't know anything about women. The feminists, yes, you had me right. They don't know anything about women. That's why they act like that. This hadith is a solid rock 
evidence that Islam has proven to us that women are so powerful. If a woman was, is today being treated like, you know when they want to sell tires, they put the advertisement of a woman. I don't know what the woman has to do with the tires. You know? If you put a man, understandable, maybe he's a mechanic or the one who puts the tires on, you know? You put something. I, I, an elephant, um, 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 say a camel, understandable. You know? But a woman, a tire? So you, you know how they are manipulated. But in Islam, it's, it's not like that. If, if, um, if a woman was to the level of the tire, there was no need to mention it. We will buy it for $200 each tire and change it every year, Khalas, four tires. But they are not that. They are so powerful, they can change a man's life just like that. That's why. What did Rasulullah say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever gets a religious woman, فَقَدْ إِسْتَقْمَلَ نِسْفَ he has completed his half religion. A one woman is considered half your faith, ya akhi. That's why this dunya, we need to know the limits, isn't it? Now this dunya of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, you know, there is a, uh, uh, something very funny happened somewhere. But it's a good thing to li listen to. Because this dunya, there is no limit to it. One day a man, he found a woman, very extremely beautiful, exceptional. He, he said to her, approached her, I, I want to get married to you. She said, fine, no problem. Come on, let's go, get married. So they take he, the, the two men, the commoner and that woman, they go to the uh, al Ma'zuna Shari'i, the one who will, the marriage celebrant. When the marriage celebrant sees a, uh, no, 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 look, this guy, Come on, man. Uh, why don't I get married to you? She said, yes, it's okay. I will get married to you. So now the, 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 the Mazuna Shari, he is interested in, he wants to get married to him. This man, he gets angry. He said, I saw her first. She agreed to get married to me, man. Come on. So, um, I'll, I'll take the qadi, the case to the qadi. He goes to the judge. He says, okay, fine. All of you come here. The three, three of them, all they come. Oh, what is your case? Okay, this. Mazun uh, Shari'i, this is it. She agreed, so I'm going to get married. Now he, he, he looks at the woman. Says, look. You want to get married to these two guys? These two modern language dumbos, right? Sorry. I want to get married to you. Said, no problem. I will get married to you. Now... The three, the two of them get angry and they put the case to the Khalifa, the main Imam. The case is brought and all these four people go there. After listening to all of them, then when the, when the Imam, he looks at her, he says, look, I want to get married to you. She said, no problem, ya Imam. You know who this woman was? What's her name? When was she born? Which color, which race, which language? It's called dunya. It is dunya. Wallahi, dunya will never tell you, you cannot have me. Dunya will always tell you, you can have me. Whatever your parents had dreams of, they couldn't make it, you thought you will do it. You have crossed your 60 and you know you can't do it, but you think that your children will do it. And then you, you did not realize that from the time of Adam alayhi same has been taught till it came to you. If the dunya is something like a moon millions kilometers away, you will know that you can't achieve it. You can't have it. Any one of you ever dreamt of living in, a, in, in the moon? Seriously, nobody. Pointless to think of it. But every one of us here have dreamt of having few houses in Bali and, 
in Hawaii and possibly in some other countries and a cruiser and a private jet. And you, you have these dreams, right? And a sports car and, and this and that. This is dunya. This is what I'm talking about. You are dreaming of these things because you know possibly you can. Maybe you are the next one. Maybe you get some software program somewhere and all of a sudden you become Bill Gates. Yeah, it comes to the kids, of course, including myself. So this is dunya. That's why the du dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Allah knows which one is hasana for you. This woman, after praying and doing qiyamul layl and reciting Surah Al-Baqarah all over, she, when Allah gives a cure, she becomes weak. Before I carry on and forget, one more thing. Surah Al-Baqarah, I know the reason I'm mentioning is because I do practice it um, to help out uh, brothers and sisters back home in New Zealand. Recite Surah Al-Baqarah. If you people have got any issues, go to Surah Al-Baqarah and recite the entire Surah Al-Baqarah every day in your life. The chances of any of these spiritual issues is going to be eliminated. One day a man, he got married in Saudi and uh, he divorced his wife because the moment they got married, he was a very nice guy, but they couldn't stay together, keep on fighting, 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 fighting. Talaq. He gets married again. Number two, same problem, divorce, anti -talik. Number three comes, same problem. Now he's scratching his head. You know, it doesn't have to be literally he did it. He may have. What is the problem, man? Is it me? Um, I know myself. I'm not this kind of type of person. Huh? If it is hard, then all three women, come on, man, give me a break. So he, he decided, and I'm not going to give talak to this third wife now. There must be something I can do about it. He takes a leave from his work, goes to Masjid Nabawi in Medina. Apart from his staying at night wherever he may have been, he was spending all his time in Masjid and Nabawi. What was he doing? Reciting Surah Al-Baqarah right from Al-Fatiha till the end. <coughs> The moment he finishes, he does it again. Two, three, four, whatever amount of time he finishes. Uh, on average, Surah Al-Baqarah will take you one hour. Average. At least. Right? So what happened? He said that after days and days and days of reading, he receives a message in his mobile. Wallahu alam who sent. He says that, look, there has been a sihr, a magic spell done on you, and it is in your sitting room. He said, I read it. Now, you may say, who, who sent it? Even that person doesn't know who said it. He sent it, it was from a number he didn't know. He tried to call, it said, uh, it's not uh, in service. But it could also be, you know, that the person who may have done the magic, you know, he, he started to suffer from the jinnat which he may have used. And then he had to tell the message to him or whichever. It could be any of those things. This is from me. So he said, I, I still carried on reading till another message comes that the spell is on the, on the window of your sitting room, it is hanging there. You may say that all three wives and still nobody opened the window. If you have lived in Middle East, you would know the type of houses there, you know the windows, there is this glass window. Outside of that, there will be these design things like um, uh, the, from timber, right? Like this slash. And that is most of the time completely closed always. And in the sitting rooms, when they put curtains, very highly uh, decorated, nice looking, expensive curtains, they don't open it after that. It stays there for years at times. So that is the way it, it was there. So he says, I went home. I never told anyone I'm coming. I never told what I have had. But the moment he went there, he, he opened the sitting room. He opened the curtain. Behind the curtain, there was this red hanging in, in one of those irons in the, in the, in the uh, window somehow. And then he opened it and there was magic inside. The spell was inside the trap. After that, after curing, uh, curing it, the entire problem disappeared. This is just to do with something which I even never thought to talk about. Anyway, the best of the both worlds. First of all, you have to take some part of this world to go to Jannah. 
You have to be a businessman? Yes. You have to make as much money as possible? No problem provided you are doing it Islamically. Al mu'min al qawi khairun wa ahabu ilallah min al mu'min al da'if. The stronger mu'min is better than a weak one. And the strength is not only in Iman, that's the first and foremost. So if you are strong in your Iman, on top of that you are strong in your body, on top of that you are strong financially, on top of that you are strong in status and position, on top of that you are healthy, and on top of that you can save the Ummah through all these things which I have mentioned. Because the Iman can mostly be only for you. But the wealth and the position which you may, you will be saving others through that. So that's why, brothers, don't be zahid to that extent. Oh, I don't want anything to do with this dunya. You have to, unless you fear on yourself. That's point number one. Point number two, when it comes to here after, that is where we want all to be, definitely. We want to be in Jannah. But before I talk something about the Jannah, I want my sisters on my left to know that many times they ask this question, okay, Allah mentions Huriyatul Jannah, the, the maids of the Jannah. Then if it is that, then where are we? You forget it that you will be superior to the maids of Jannah. You will be in the Jannah and the superiority being given to you is above that. And nobody in the Jannah will ever, otherwise it cannot be Jannah, the paradise. Nobody in the Jannah will ever feel left out, ever feel that they are going through hard times or being unfair or unsatisfied. So everybody would be. The Jannah which I'm talking about, subhanAllah, we mention it many times. Nobody has seen it, nobody has heard about it. You can't even imagine it many things which Allah has said and there are more than that which we don't know of it will be given to you when the time comes the palace which is in the Jannah the houses of the Jannah the maids of the Jannah the food of the Jannah the fruits of the Jannah the rivers of the Jannah the drinks in the Jannah the eternal bless, blessing with this eternal life in the Jannah did you ever think of and focus on when you are going to be living in the Jannah forever? Sometimes think about it. Forever, we know forever. But sit down one day and give a few minutes. I have done it many times myself. Then you start to think, what does forever mean? Oh, it will mean that every day I will still be alive. Every day I will still be 33 years old. Every day I will never get sick. Every day I will never go to the toilet because there is no toilet in the Jannah. Every day I will never be asleep because when you are asleep, you are like being dead. Every day I will be awake. Every day I will have my, my mates and all the, my wife and my, everyone in the Jannah. Every day I will eat as I wish. Every day I will drink as I wish. Every day I will never fear to die. Every day there is nothing I have to make payments of every day I know that my life is not shortening because there is no death after that every day I will keep on enjoying every day even the trees which will be in the Jannah the sound coming from that there is you cannot compare it to any of the voices of this Jannah the best of the voices given to you when your wife will sing for you sometimes we tell our wives to sing for us they may be too shy to do that but they will do it and you will do it in the Jannah inshallah so all this, you think about this. Wallahi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, لو بزقت في البحر لسارت عذبا If she spits in the sea, it will become sweet. So I used to say, you know, I wish they spit in the sea so it all becomes sweet. We won't need any Pepsi and Coke after that. But this is the truth. The truth in the sense of what Allah has said about it. If one of them, they come to this dunya just, just a little bit, the sun will be sort of disappeared. It, uh, the, the, her light is more brighter than the light of the sun. We can't tolerate it. Our, our current body cannot take it. At that time, we will also be different. The woman will also be different. So that is the Jannah which we are talking about. But then we keep on forgetting, we keep on forgetting, we keep on forgetting about it. Wallahu al-Mustan. In the end, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah <coughs> bless us all 
give us the best of this dunya and hereafter. And may Allah give us sincerity in whatever we do. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from Ahlul Jannah as our families, our friends, and everyone. Wa barakallahu fikum. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi l'akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati yamma yisifun. Wa salamun ala al-mulsaneen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.